there, very good evening and welcome to the News at 6 where we get you the day's top developing stories. I'm Tracy Shilchi and here are the headlines. Jammu and Kashmir Chief Minister Mehboob Mufti slams Pakistan and separatist leaders for fueling trouble in the state, says Prime Minister Narendra Modi will end the unrest in the state. But on the ground, Kashmir turmoil enters the 50th day. Militants kill policemen in, uh, in Pulwama district, taking the death toll over 70 in the valley. Whistleblower in the Scorpion leak to hand over leaked data to Australian government on Monday. Defence Minister says the leak is not a big worry as weapon details are not included in the documents. And the first 2020 match between India and world champions West Indies to be played at Lauder Hill in Florida. Mahindra Singh Dhoni will be leading the side with all the regular players. Our top story, Jammu and Kashmir Chief Minister Mehboba Mufti today met Prime Minister Narendra Modi to discuss the unrest in the Kashmir Valley. She blamed Pakistan and separatist leaders for fueling unrest in the state. And describing her discussions with Prime Minister Modi, she said that the Prime Minister was very concerned about the situation and will get the state out of the deadly turmoil. Amid the ongoing unrest and curfew that entered its 50th day on Saturday, Jammu and Kashmir Chief Minister Mehboob Mufti met Prime Minister Narendra Modi to discuss the prevailing situation in the valley. It's a matter of concern. 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 And it's a matter of concern. 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 Mehbooba sought an institutional mechanism of interlocutors to bring all stakeholders together in order to carry forward former Prime Minister Atal Bihari Vajpayee's policy of an internal dialogue. Concern ki baat hai, Prime Minister ke liye bhi hai, aur wo chahte hain ki ye khun kharaba ruk jaye, Jammu Kashmir jo hai is musibat se bahar nikal aaye, aur unhone baar baar kaha aur humne hamara bhi ye manna hai. कि जो पीडीपी और बीजेपी की अलायंस हुई है उसका बेसिस ही ये था कि जो वाजपेयी जी ने जम्मू कश्मीर के हवाले से एक डायलॉग यहां भी और पाकिस्तान के साथ एक रिकंसलेशन का प्रोसेस शुरू किया है उसको आगे चला के जहां उन्होंने छोड़ा था उसको आगे चला के जम्मू कश्मीर की जो भी समस्या है उसका कोई हल ढूंढा जाए जैसे मुफ्ती साहब बार बार कहते थे कि मोदी जी के पास टू थर्ड मेजोरिटी है अगर इनके वक्त में कुछ नहीं होगा तो फिर कभी कुछ नहीं होगा अगर वाजपेयी जी आगे आए होते उस वक्त 2005 में तो मुझे लगता है भी जम्मू कश्मीर की समस्या काफी देर हद तक हल हो गई बट द एफर्ट्स ऑफ द बीजेपी पीडीपी अलायंस टू ब्रिंग नॉर्मलसी इन द वैली थ्रू एन इंस्टीट्यूशनलाइज्ड मैकेनिज्म रिसीव्ड मिक्स्ड रिएक्शंस फ्रॉम अदर पॉलिटिकल पार्टीज नो आई थिंक देयर इज एन एब्सोल्यूट कोऑर्डिनेशन बिटवीन द सेंटर एंड द स्टेट एंड देयरफॉर वी आर मूविंग इन द राइट डायरेक्शन ऑल ऑफ अस एंड आई एम श्योर वेरी सून things will return to normal in the valley and uh, we'll move ahead on the course of development it is now clear that everything to do with kashmir now is very closely monitored by the prime minister's office it is the prime minister who took the initiative to convene the all parties meeting it is he again who met with the uh, leaders of the opposition in jammu and kashmir and uh, he's now met the uh, chief minister so uh, we'll have to watch and see how this complements the efforts of the home minister mr rajnath singh who's just finished his second visit to uh, the valley government of india is expected to take some decisions some of these decisions are going to be hard and of a far reaching impact the present uh, issue is the urgent issue is how to diffuse the situation how to de escalate the situation and uh, i don't think uh, they have any clarity even home minister who went there he simply said government will look for alternatives to pellet guns aur jo bhi kashmir ke hai bigger kisi condition ke sabse baat chit karna chahiye ye to hum log shuru se hi keh rahe hain aur jab tak aap rajnitik dialogue sabke sath shuru nahi karenge kashmir ka jo halat hai is samay wo samanya ho nahi payega
Well, the situation in uh, the Kashmir Valley continues to be a matter of concern. The central government and the state government, the BJP PDP government, uh, must walk that extra mile to see that the situation is brought under control. Notwithstanding the pressure, Pakistan High Commissioner stepped ahead and said his country is ready to discuss the Kashmir dispute to ensure peace. और भारत वो आगे बात नहीं चली लेकिन हम अब भी उम्मीद करते हैं कि कश्मीर में बातचीत होनी चाहिए और कश्मीर एक ऐसा मसला है जिसे कश्मीरियों के उनकी उमंगों के मुताबिक हल होना चाहिए और यही हमारी हमेशा से ये पोजीशन रही है और हम उम्मीद करते हैं कि पाकिस्तान और भारत के दरमियान जम्मू और कश्मीर पे बातचीत का सिलसिला जिस तरह पाकिस्तान ने तजवीज किया है उस तरह बातचीत का मसला आगे बढ़ेगा the Jammu and Kashmir Chief Minister appealed to the protesters on the streets that she should be given a chance to resolve the issue. The centre is planning to form a new team to start the dialogue in Kashmir through informal channels and help resolve the crisis that has derailed normal life of Kashmiris for almost two months. Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha TV. Well, our correspondent Sham Sundar is joining us now on this story from the capital. Sham, this meeting very significant, of course, the first time that the Chief Minister is meeting uh, the Prime Minister ever since the unrest started on the 8th of July. Uh, and what is crucial that's coming out of it is that she does agree that eventually we do have to speak to all sides in the state and also an all-party delegation will definitely be heading over to the state. Well, Tracy, non, not only in this meeting, we have seen at least in last uh, one week that uh, uh, from different section of the government, where, uh, you, if you talk about uh, Chief of Army's uh, staff, uh, uh, Mr. Swag, he was there in Srinagar and he said that uh, our uh, security force, uh, forces should uh, use restraint when uh, handling the crowd and after that, uh, oh, uh, Rajnath Singh was there and he had a meeting and joint press conference with uh, Mehbooba Mufti and uh, today at the top level, at Prime Minister level uh, she met and after that uh, the language she was speaking uh, that government uh, understands that in Kashmir biggest task for the government is confidence building uh, measures and uh, and uh, in last one week we have seen that government has seriously uh, taken few steps in that direction uh, whether you uh, you talk about all party delegation going to Kashmir or uh, uh, army is speaking in different language or uh, meeting at uh, today uh, at Prime Minister Minister's uh, office uh, in Delhi. So uh, there are uh, th there is a realization that uh, if they want uh, normalcy in uh, uh, Kashmir Valley, uh, then they have to talk to different uh, stakeholders. And uh, there is uh, a consensus now in the government that they have to. As far as Pakistan is concerned, uh, Pakistan may have uh, its own stand, but uh, of course uh, India is in with dialogue. We have to see that uh, the, how back channel diplomacy can work with Pakistan and yes. different stakeholders in. Kashmir. So it's a difficult and uh, and, and a very uh, complicated uh, process which government has to adopt. But uh, of course it, uh, it is good that the government has realized that they have to talk to different stakeholders uh, in Kashmir. Absolutely. And you know what's also interesting is that Mehbooba Mufti is not mincing words. She's really blaming the separatists. She's blaming Pakistan head on, not running, beating around the bush like we've seen in the previous statements. Uh, this time around, she's making it very clear who are at fault, who are the culprits, uh, you know, and she is trying to reach out to the people in that sense, telling them to finally look at the sense uh, and, you know, stop the violence on the streets. Well, uh, uh, one thing is that Mahbuba Mufti wants to show that uh, whether state government or central government, government or they are on one page, they want to diffuse this uh, situation in uh, Kashmir, but uh, they are not going to compromise with separatists or uh, uh, with Pakistan. Of course, uh, yes. uh, central government also is saying that Pakistan's interference is uh, the main cause for this unrest, but, of course, uh, but then uh, Mahbuba Mufti has to take responsibility. She is the chief minister and she, uh, she and the central government, they have the responsibility to diffuse uh, 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 this situation and uh, uh, bring normalcy to the uh, valley. So mm. uh, she may uh, uh, give this, these statements, but she understands that ultimately it is her responsibility to uh, bring uh, normalcy in, in uh, uh, Kashmir. So, uh, of course, she will uh, give these statements, but uh, she has to seriously uh, uh, work with the centre uh, to take uh, uh, measures which can create some confidence in uh, different stakeholders uh, in Kashmir. 
Kashmir. Absolutely. And very quickly, Shah, before I let you go, there's some reports uh, now saying that the government is, of course, the centre is, of course, looking at different options and a change of the governor is also something they are considering. Are you hearing something like that? Well, uh, I can't confirm uh, this news, but yes. uh, in 2010, I have uh, seen some similar kind of situation. I was present in the Srinagar, and after that, uh, 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 central government at that time also realized that uh, back-channel diplomacy, uh, uh, track three or track two diplomacy, which we call, uh, that is very, very important in Kashmir. Mm. So, uh, not only political leaders, but uh, intellectuals, uh, diplomats, and different uh, people, they should uh, be involved in this process, and yes. uh, that is the only way to bring normalcy. So, of course, government is trying uh, different options and uh, we hope that uh, uh, they reach on a uh, good conclusion. Absolutely. On a solution that eventually brings some peace on the ground. For the moment, we're not seeing that. Thanks so much, Sham, for joining us. In fact, heading on with this story, a policeman was shot dead Saturday morning by suspected militants in Jammu and Kashmir's Pulwama. Constable Khurshid Ahmed Ganai was shot by unknown gunmen outside his residence at Pulwama. Ganai succumbed to his injuries after being critically injured and is survived by his wife and two children. Earlier this week, five policemen, including two officers, were also injured in a terror attack in Pulwama. In other news, BJP President Amit Shah today convened a meeting of chief ministers and deputy chief ministers of BJP ruled states. At the meeting, Shah asserted that BJP has ushered in an era of politics of performance. He also asked chief ministers to make their states an effective instrument for execution of the centre's pro-poor and good governance agenda. All the states also made a presentation of their work and what they plan to do in the future, especially in the field of agriculture, women's empowerment and employment. This was the first such gathering of the BJP rule chief minister since the party stormed to power at the centre in May 2014. Prime Minister Narendra Modi is expected to address the meeting later today. Meanwhile, President Pranam Mukherjee on Saturday attended the maiden convocation ceremony of Nalanda University and launched the ceremony for construction of the sprawling university campus. President Mukherjee, who was on a two-day visit to Bihar, awarded degrees to 12 students of the first batch of the university. Bihar Chief Minister Nitish Kumar and Chancellor of the University George Yeo and former Chancellor and Nobel Laureate Amartya Sen were also present at the ceremony. The university is an initiative of the Indian government and 18 East Asian countries. Representatives of eight other countries also participated. The President will now head to Bengaluru to address the 24th Annual Convocation of the National Law School of India University on a Sunday before returning to Delhi. I don't like to go into the details of what transpired from 2006-07, first conceptualization to this age development when we are happy to see the bright faces, gleaming eyes of the young graduating students who are moving out of the portal of this university today as the first batch of graduates of Nalanda University. Revive. Now on to the latest of, on the massive scorpion data leak. The whistleblower behind the document leak will hand over the disk containing thousands of pages of data to the Australian government on Monday. The data includes crucial information about the Indian submarine stealth and warfare, warfare capabilities. According to the Australian newspaper, which first published the massive leak of documents, the whistleblower wants Australia to know that its future submarine partner, France, has already lost control of a secret data on India's new submarines. The newspaper also said that the story behind the leak may be more of incompetence than espionage. Defence Minister Manohar Parikar today played out the leak, uh, in fact had played down the leak on Friday, saying that it was not a big worry for India. And here's a look at what else is making news across the country in Nationwide. Karnataka Chief Minister Siddharamaya convened an all-party meeting in Bengaluru today to discuss Tamil Nadu's demand for the release of water from the Krishna Raja Sagar Reservoir. The meeting was attended by MPs from the state. He concluded that the state will not be able to share the river Kaveri's water with Tamil Nadu. The deficit in rainfall has left Karnataka in acute water crisis and Tamil Nadu has moved the Supreme Court seeking the release of Kaveri water. 
Banda district of Uttar Pradesh has now been hit by waterborne diseases. At least six people are reportedly killed through the ex although the exact cause of the death still remain unknown. Many people complaining of severe headache, diarrhea and gastroenteritis have been admitted to district hospitals. Doctors said that the symptoms resemble dengue as many patients were suffering from high fever and a rapidly falling blood platelet count. At least two people died and several others were injured after a fire broke out at a government hospital in Mushidabad district of West Bengal. Several patients, including children from a ward next to the site of the fire, fell ill because of smoke inhalation. Chief Minister Mamata Banerjee has ordered an investigation into the reasons behind the incident. With a quick break here, we'll be back with more news in a bit. Stay with us. Gyan Chopper is the ancient version of Indian snakes and ladders. This intriguing game was popular among the old, the young and the rulers as well. The chopper has its origin in the Jain philosophy. It tells the story of virtue, symbolized by the ladders, rewarded, while the vices shown by the snakes are punished. Each square, in turn, also narrates a message of wisdom. Welcome back. International News Now in Italy marked a day of national mourning on Saturday for the 290 people killed in Wednesday's earthquake that devastated parts of the mountainous regions. A state funeral was organized for 35 of the victims in the town of Ascoli Piccino. The death toll is expected to rise further as rescue and relief operations still continue. Flags flew at half-mast across Italy as the country observed a day of national mourning for the victims of the earthquake that killed nearly 290 people. A mass funeral was organized for 35 victims from the town of Arkhota at a sports hall in the regional capital Ascoli Picciano. The coffins laid out in rows on the floor include two painted white for two children killed. Prime Minister Matteo Renzi was among those attending the funeral along with President Sergio Mattarella. Most of the victims were Italian, but several foreigners were among those killed. Sì, per anche se non li conosco, però mi ha stretto il cuore perché sto proprio con loro perché ci ha perso tutto, persone care, casa, i sacrifici che uno ha fatto. Even though rescuers had little hope of finding more survivors, they kept searching through the rubble of the worst hit town, Amatrice. More aftershocks were also registered in the early hours of Saturday, one with the magnitude of four. More than 200 people died in Amatrice alone, along with Arkwada and Akumali, Pescara del Tronto was also hard hit. The 6.2 magnitude quake hit in the early hours of Wednesday, 100 kilometers northeast of Rome. Bureau report, Rajasabha TV. United States and Russia failed to achieve any breakthrough towards a new ceasefire in Syria, even after nine hours of talks in Geneva. The focus of the meet was to iron out details of how to address the ceasefire violations by President Bashar al-Assad's regime, as well as the rise of a rebel group linked to al-Qaeda that has mingled with opposition groups backed by the U.S., Addressing a joint news conference on Friday, U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry and Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov said that talks between teams from both the countries will continue over the next several days. The meeting marked yet another attempt to find common ground on easing a conflict that has killed at least 2,50,000 people. We don't want to have a deal for the sake of a deal. We want to have something done that is effective and that works for the people of Syria, that makes the region more stable and secure, and that brings us to the table here in Geneva to find a political solution. We are for a united Syria. Uh, we do not support an independent Kurd uh, initiative. Uh, there has been some limited engagement, as everybody knows, with a component of uh, 
uh, Kurd fighters on a limited basis, and we cooperated very closely with, uh, uh, specifically with Turkey, specifically, uh, to make sure that there was a clear understanding of the rules by which that would, engagement would take place. And here are more international news updates in Global Buzz. Bangladeshi security forces killed the alleged mastermind of last month's attack at a cafe in Dhaka today. Tamim Ahmed Chaudhry and two other militants were killed after a joint team of counter-terrorism and police stormed their hideout in the outskirts of Dhaka. The cafe attack in Dhaka on the 1st of July killed 22 people, including 17 foreigners and two policemen. A South African stunt pilot was killed when his plane crashed at an air show in Jiangye in northwestern China's Gansu province. The video shows people first reacting as if it were a stunt, but started shouting a few seconds later when they realized something went wrong. No one else, though, was injured in the crash. Residents in U.S.'s Kansas City were urged to stay off streets and take shelter on higher ground after a powerful storm caused flash floods in the region on Friday night. The National Weather Service issued an emergency alert for the downtown area, which received more than six inches of rain. Sports now in the first 2020 match uh, between, uh, between the two match series uh, between India and World Champions West Indies will be played at Lauder Hill in Florida today. Mahindra Singh Dhoni is returning to lead the side in the series with 11 regular players who were rested in the tour to Zimbabwe in May, also making a comeback. Although the two-time World T20 champions West Indies have a 3-2 edge over India, but the men in blue will look to continue their good form in T20, having won their last three series. India had cruised to a 2-0 victory over the Caribbean side in the four-match test series. Meanwhile, Prime Minister Narendra Modi has announced plans to set up a task force which will prepare an action plan for the upcoming Olympics in 2020, 2024 and 2028. The task force will be responsible for preparing a st strategy for sports facilities, training, selection procedures and related matters. India's 118-member contingent won two medals at the recently concluded Rio Olympics. Here are the details. With a poor showing at the Rio Olympic Games, Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Friday announced the setting up of a task force to prepare the roadmap for the next three games. Speaking at a meeting of the Council of Ministers, Modi said the task force will be set up in the next few days. A statement from the Prime Minister's office said the task force will be set up to prepare a comprehensive action plan for effective participation of Indian sportspersons in the next three Olympic Games to be held in 2020, 2024 and 2028. The task force will prepare overall strategy for sports facility, training, selection procedure and other related matters. The task force will comprise of members who are in-house experts as well as foreign experts. The decision comes against the backdrop of India's dismal performance in the Rio Olympics as the country won only one silver and one bronze medal, even after sending its biggest contingent of 118 athletes. India finished 67th in the medals tally. A shuttler PV Sindhu clinched silver while wrestler Sakshi Malik won bronze, sparking an outpouring of national pride and celebrations in India but it was far below the sports ministry's target of 10 medals in Rio. India has never finished high on the medals table, winning just 28 medals from 24 Olympic appearances. Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha TV. And here are more updates from the world of sports and sports beat. Indian tennis player Saket Maineni qualified in the singles main draw for the Grand Slam for the first time after beating Serbian Peja Kristin 6-3-6 love in the final qualifying round. Maineni, who is India's highest ranked tennis player, has never previously played at an ATP Tour event. His first round opponent at the US Open will be world number 48 Yuri Vesely of Czech Republic. Robert Lewandowski scored a hat-trick as Bayern Munich thrashed Werder Bremen 6-0 in the opening game of the Bundesliga. The champions went ahead through a stunning Javi Alonso volley before Lewandowski struck twice. Captain Philipp Lahm and Frank Ribery also found the net frequently. American Patrick Reed moved a step closer in his bid for a fifth PGA Tour as he seized a two-stroke lead at the halfway stage of the Barclays tournament. 
Reid, who was a co-leader with Scotland's Martin Laird overnight, mixed six birdies with three bogeys to card a three under par 68. A win for Reid will also ensure him an automatic selection for next month's Ryder Cup. That's all we have for you on the News at 6. Have a good evening.